It's happening! It's happening right now! I'm live! Right now! I'm just moving things around so you can see me. Right now! Here I am! Holly, stop it! Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Say hello if you're out there! Hello! Ha ha! Hello! Hello! Hang on a second, I'm just gonna set this up so I can see your comments at the same time that I'm doing this live. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay. So, welcome to today's clown workout. There's five of you here. Yeah. Party six, eight. Oh my God. This is a proper party. Yeah. This is my first ever Facebook Live. I did a little taster, tester before. And, oh, hello. Um, yeah, and I'd like to show you I put on a fancy dress. Yeah. Because I thought that would help. Um, and it is helping. I feel much more like myself so yeah clown workout i thought i'd try a live i've never done one so why not do it one today and the theme of this one is all about who are you making your audience so this is quite interesting on on my way to make this live for the last half hour i've had butterflies in my tummy and i've had sweat in my hands and I've been shaking and I'm asking myself the question who am I making my audience who is the the audience that's bringing this fear this like oh my god this these nerves this oh my god is this going to be good enough are they going to like it are they going to like me oh my god are they going to like me um and so learning this learning who uh, I am projecting onto my audience has been a great key for me in getting over stage fright, which sort of blighted most of my early career as a performer. So this is stuff that I've done through my own personal process, but it's also stuff that I offer um, for people who come to my classes. So we look at this stuff an awful lot. So are we going to do a little bit of a physical warm up just to get you into your bodies? And then I'm, I'm going to invite you to play with some of this concept of who am I making my audience? So um, actually, before we do that, you might want to gather up a few objects. We're going to do a bit of object play for this. So just have a look around your room and pick up a few objects, unbreakable objects, um, just things that you can play with. And, you know, they don't have to be particularly interesting, just um, so you can have at your fingertips. Get yourself a bit of space, see if you can find yourself a bit of space. And we're going to do a little bit of a physical warm up, because why not? We're going to start with just having a bit of a bounce. So you're keeping your toes on the floor and you're just giving your body a good old bounce. Oh, yeah, letting go of any of the tension that's been building up for you today. It's time for it all to go. Breathing out. Oh. Yeah, that's good. Keep going. You might want to release that sound as well. <laughs> you're going to do uh, one forward and one back and then you're going to switch over. And you might want to put a little knee dip in the middle there to give a bit of sense of propelling. And you can turn your body with the swing as well if you like. Oh, a little turn. And if you're feeling really fancy, you can try this. One, two and over the top. One, two, and over the top. One, two, and over the top. Let that fall away. Let that all fall away. Ah. So we're going to go for a few slaloms. I love the slaloms. So this is what they look like. Some of you will already know that. I'm going to break that down. So you're going to start with, you can mirror what I'm doing. You're going to start with this hand in front of your face. And you curve it round to the back of your head. And it goes all the way up and all the way out. So let's do that again. Front of your face, back of your head, up and out. And front of your face, the back of your head and up and out. I'm just speeding that up a little bit. Finding a bit of a smoothness with that. A bit of pleasure. Yeah, let's try that with the other side. So start in front of your face, behind your head and up and down. That's it, you got it. Yeah, just speeding that up a little bit. Yeah, just warming up those shoulders, warming up those arms. Okay, can you do both of those together? So you start with one hand here, and as it gets around to the back of your head, the other one comes here. So you're alternating. Can you do this with the spirit of curiosity? 
Like, even if it's really impossible for you, can you keep your heart lifted? Can you keep a light heart and an openness to your process? How are we going to let that drop away? Oh. So, um... I'm going to lead you back into the state of bafflement and we did bafflement on the very first w workout all those thousands of years ago but don't worry if you didn't do it I'm going to lead you in now I'm going to lead you into the state of bafflement and in the state of bafflement I'm going to invite you to explore an object uh, and then I'm going to give you some more invitations as you go so uh, let's begin in the state of bafflement so to get into the state of bafflement it's pretty easy you just think about the spot on the back of your head here Let your face soften a little bit. Put yourself into a really baffled, open state of not knowing. You don't have to know anything right now. And in this state of bafflement, I'd like you to pick up an object, any object. Pick something up. Feel the weight of it in your hands. Feel the temperature texture maybe have a little sniff what does it smell like have a little listen what does it sound like what could it be if it wasn't what it appears to be what could it be imagine this is the first time you've ever held one of these in your hands and you're from another planet so just picking up this object exploring it finding out what it can do what it can be and what if you didn't have to be good interesting or clever what if the whole point of this is just to discover to be in the state of discovery so See if it's possible to explore without judgment this object. And you're just doing this for yourself right now. It's for nobody else. It's just for you. Have a bit of time with this object. Have a bit of fun with this object. So I want you to carry on playing with this object, but now I want you to include me. So occasionally look back at me and I want you to imagine that I am your biggest fan. Like, I just think you're brilliant. I just think everything you do is absolutely brilliant and you really don't have to do very much to impress me. I'm, I'm already impressed. So as you're playing, include me as your most supportive audience member. I just think you're brilliant. I do. I think you're brilliant. Yeah. I love it. I love what you're doing. It's brilliant. Yeah, just keep doing it. It's brilliant. Super. Yeah, yeah. Just keep doing it. It's really cool. <gasps> I love it when you do that. I love this. I love this. Notice how you're feeling as you're playing for your greatest fan. How are you feeling in your body? How are you feeling in your breath? How are you feeling in your emotions? Yeah, you want to show me what else it can do? I love it. I love what you're doing. Tell me what else it can do. Wow, it's amazing. What else? Wow. Keep playing. And now I want you to imagine that I am uh, your worst critic. I am your worst critic. And I, I think what you're doing is pretty rubbish, actually. It's really... You're doing that again. I mean, I've already seen that. That's... I don't know why you're bothering with that. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Notice how you're feeling emotionally, notice how you're feeling in your body, notice how you're feeling in your breath as you perform now for your critic. Oh, it's really... <sighs> I haven't got a lot of time for this. I might just uh, go make a cup of tea or something. <sighs> what else? <sighs> yeah, what else? Yeah, yeah, great. That's that's really great. Yeah. Anything else? <sighs> okay, shake that off. I'd like you to keep playing and I'd like you to imagine that I am 
the object of your affection. I am the celebrity that you most want to kiss. I am that person. And so everything you do, you do for me as a seduction. For the celebrity who you most want to kiss. Do it as a seduction. Yeah, play for me as a seduction. Oh, yeah. It's very sexy. Whatever you're doing, it's very, very sexy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's, mm, that. I mean, that. Oh, fascinating, really. Oh. And now, I'd like you to imagine me as a child, a little tiny child, and everything you do, you're going to do for me, just like you might play with a child. Hey. And the queen, mm. yes, play for me like the queen, that's right. Anybody who's just joining me now, do play for me like the queen. How might you play for the queen? Just like that, lovely, lovely. Mm -hmm. Lovely. And finally, for your best friend. Your best friend, the person who thinks you're brilliant, the person who supports you and thinks you're wonderful. Pretend I am them. Play for your best friend. Okay. And take a little pause. Take a little pause from that. You can, if you put your red nose on, you can take it off and you can uh, just have a little shake off of the state of bafflement just to kind of get yourself back in the room, back in your body. So um, how was that? What did you notice? I'm going to look at the messages and see if there's anything you want to share with me. How did that affect your quality of play to have your audience cast as different beings? What did you notice in your play? Oh, my little boy just kissed you on the screen. I like to hear that. Hi, Liam. <laughs> Any other comments? Anything you want to share with me about how that landed? Yeah, David, you're saying it made a dif big difference. How did it make a difference? What did you notice physically? What did you notice emotionally? What did you notice with your breath? Critic Holly is crushing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's my inner critic. That's an embodiment of my inner critic. And uh, a lot of the people that I, yeah, Robin's saying the same, my critic made me want to stop doing anything at all. And, and that's my experience. That's my experience as a performer. And it's my experience as, as a teacher as well. When there's a lot of criticism in the room, it's difficult to play. It's difficult to drop into that kind of innocent, open state of, of play. Um, stunted joy when the critic was watching. Tightness of breath, says B. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult to play, isn't it? Um, and B's also saying it was most easy to play with the child. Everything was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's interesting, isn't it? It's like how we... Oh, and also Bertie Boulevard is saying there was a sudden tension that crept in the body and the breath when the critic was in. It's fascinating, isn't it? And yeah, Dave is saying the same. He was breathing less for the critic. And yeah, I, I find that... Um, I, I kind of put my finger on this around about the age of 30 or 31. I realised that I was projecting my inner critic onto my audience. When I was stepping onto stage, I was stepping into an auditorium full of critics, full of full of people who were judging me and, and hated me and wanting me to, to fail. And I've done a lot of work through therapy and through meditation to really befriend my critic and find out about, you know, what it's trying to protect me from. Um, and, and these days when I when I walk onto stage, I'm able to greet the audience as my friend to begin our encounter as friends as oh, brilliant. You're here uh, and I'm here. And that's great, isn't it? What what shall we do together? What, what sort of party shall we have together today? And starting with that. Um, starting with that sense of the audience is my friend has kind of opened up a real 
a real playful quality where I feel a lot lighter and freer on stage. Yeah, Dave is saying most at ease with the first to have like your greatest fan in the audience. And so why not? Why not when you step onto stage, cast every single person in the audience as your best friend, as your number one fan, as uh, an auditorium full of uh, young appreciative children or happy dogs? Yeah, yeah, Danny's saying the same, held breath and didn't look up as the critic. You didn't want to make that connection as the critic. When I was the critic, you didn't want to look up and make that connection. And that's what happens when the critic's in the room. We we uh, disconnect, we go into disconnect, and it's very difficult to reach out. And in clowning, we all know this is the most important thing. The connection is the most important thing. So if you're really suffering on stage ee, with this internal criticism, it's very, very difficult to... Um, Oh, someone's phoning me up. It's very difficult to uh, reach out for that connection with the audience. Oh, Jane sent me a little dancing Snoopy. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. So, my challenge to you, my challenge to you, if you fancy taking this one up, is to make a little tiny video uh, where you begin, um, you, you step up, you walk onto stage or you walk onto the view of your camera, you notice the camera and you cast the audience as, as something. You either cast them as your best friend or you cast them as your critic or you cast them as the queen or whatever. You, you cast the audience as, as somebody and you step onto stage and you make a connection uh, in that way. And you begin an encounter and then you realise that you were wrong. You made an assumption that they're your best friend, but actually they're not. They're your worst enemy. Or you made an assumption that they're the queen, but actually it's only a little child. So let's see that switch. Let's see that tra transition from beginning with one projection of uh, imagining the audience is one thing and then realising there's something completely different. And then finding a reason to get off stage, find a reason to exit. That is your challenge. Uh, now, before we finish, I've got a little bit of extra time. Do you imagine a specific person? Yeah, you can. If that's useful for you, you can. Um, I have, I bring my grandma in to the audience. I make sure I have my nana in the audience. Every audience I play in, I'm, I give her a seat and make sure she's there. Um, and I feel that's really supportive to have her presence in the audience. Um, but it doesn't have to be specific. It could just be a sense of, well, these are friendly people. Um, but yeah, I always plant my Nana somewhere central in the audience. Um, Bertie Boulevard says, in a performance, if we cast an audience as our best friend, friend, but then they're not so friendly, what next? Call it out, play on it. Yeah, that's a good question. I think, I mean, from all the street uh, experience that I've had working on the street when, like, I mean, a lot of the time the audience isn't your friend. The, the audience is quite trepidatious. They're quite worried. They they don't know what's going to happen. So they come into the encounter quite guarded. Um, and I think just assuming that they are my friends, but they're just feeling a bit scared, um, tends to break the ice because I, I will relate to them in a way... Um, that gives them space to be, gives them space to be. I'm not making demands of them. I'm not saying, hey, look, it's not okay to be here if you're frightened. Uh, you can only be here if you're really confident. So I, I meet the audiences where they are. I say, oh, uh, hi, um, you're welcome to stay just as you are. That's, that's where you need to be. You need to be all the way over there and you need to have your arms folded. Okay, that's, that's how you need to interact with me right now. So I've done a lot of work in letting go of my projection of, of the judge onto audiences because I think um, back in the olden days, I would have seen that kind of behaviour, that kind of arm folding, and I would have taken that as a personal slight, like, oh God, that's my fault. Um, I've done something wrong. It's because I'm, it's cause I'm rubbish. That's, that's why. Oh, they hate me. Oh, they hate me. So that would be my go-to back in the olden days, and that would make me push, push, push really hard for their affections um and and these days these days i i don't take it so personally i can see an audience and i can go ah you're you're guarded today um you don't feel safe right now in this encounter okay uh, i can i can work with that i can respect that and 
let you come to me in your own in your own time on your own terms um does that answer your question bertie boulevard in the meantime do we have one more question i've got one more minute before i'm gonna go oh liam says he loves me oh oh thanks liam it's nice to be loved <laughs> so on that note i'm gonna love you and leave you um thanks so much for coming to this first ever holly stop it goes live um i will put information in the links about where to post your videos and um, thanks for playing with me bye